Well, hello, 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 and welcome to the uh, Pixelogic stream. And uh, <clears throat> just a few uh, bits of business uh, out of the way before we get started. Uh, first off, I just want to make sure that you guys can hear me okay and that um, you um, can see me okay. And so we're, we're broadcasting this on three different... Um, services. So if somebody from Facebook and Twitch and YouTube can chime in and say that you can see, uh, see me okay, that would be great. We can get started. So if you can see me, you can hear me uh, just in the chat. If you can just type in that things are going okay, we can go ahead and get started. All right. So while that's happening, I will just kind of do a, a little bit of um, kind of housekeeping here too. Um, if you are watching this video live, uh, that's great. Uh, and uh, if, uh, if you are watching this after the fact, that's fine too. Uh, make sure you um, put in a, uh, you know, you know all the, the scoop, you know, like. If you like this channel, subscribe. Uh, there's a lot of really great streamers. There's a lot of really great information for you. So if you subscribe to the channel, you'll be notified when there's new videos. Um, I usually stream uh, every other Friday night from 7 to 9 Los Angeles time. And uh, if uh, you want to comment on it, please leave a comment. If you have any questions, you can ask, of course, on live. But, um, but if you are watching this after the fact, uh, you can either tune in to the next stream and ask your question or... Uh, what you can also do is uh, leave your question in the comments and uh, somebody will answer it for you. All right, so, um, all right, uh, there's, a, I guess, a little bit of advertising here on the chat. But again, I'm just waiting for uh, people to uh, let me know if you can hear me and see me okay. And if you can, we can go ahead and get started. All right, so let me uh, hide this screen and bring up ZBrush. Uh, and I uh, still don't know if you guys can see me and hear me okay. There's quite a few of you on there. Hopefully somebody can uh, type a comment and let me know that you can see and hear me okay. All right, so it looks like... All right, so uh, Lemelad, I hope I'm saying that correctly. Thank you for letting me know. So we're doing good on Twitch. Uh, if somebody can, from YouTube can chime in, that would be awesome. And uh, if you do, then we can, um, I think Facebook is a little bit, uh, okay, good. Uh, thank you, uh, the person from YouTube. And uh, yeah, so I guess we can go ahead and get started. So we're working on this character. Uh, this is, I think the third, uh, let me make sure here. I think it's the third one. Yeah, it's episode three of this season, season five. And, um, so in the previous two, uh, in the previous two streams, we basically started developing uh, a character. Uh, I basically started a female one last time, uh, and the first one I kind of did a the male character. Went over some of the new ideas and, and uh, workflows that I was uh, wanting to share with you, and uh, then we basically started with this this female one. So here I just wanted to kind of uh, go ahead. I did a little bit of work off camera, not much. Uh, but uh, I just wanted to show you that a good thing to do is always have the character inside of the costume. And uh, when you turn on transparency mode, you can see uh, where the costume is. Uh, so you can kind of get an idea of how far from the body it is. Uh, I mean, this is more like a turning out to be more of a spacesuit. So there is a bit of padding and material. So uh, you basically get that little bit of distance from, from the body. Of course, if you want to get it up closer, you can by um, doing a reverse inflate or something like that. But anyway, let me turn transparency off. So this is basically the, the costume. And let me also turn off polyframe. So this basically is the costume we were working on last time. I just went in just similar things that I was doing towards the uh, end of the stream uh, where I've just used the Damien Standard brush to go in and sculpt some features. And I'll be doing quite a bit of that today, uh, but also uh, I made this helmet uh, and a visor. And um, of course, uh, I might make a new helmet today. I don't know. I think this one looks pretty good. I might just end up keeping it. So this would be kind of a character from a TV show like uh, The Expanse or uh, maybe um, what's the new one? Foundation. Uh, you know, like some show where there is some uh, kind of uh, space type of fairing 
uh, that's going on and uh, there is some sort of a space costume uh, that the person has to wear. So I also want to remind you that uh, in addition to having uh, the, the costume here, we also got the poly paint from uh, the uh, different patterns that I projected on. So the, this is all the different uh, poly paints. I've, I've kind of uh, you know gone in and, and done some touch-ups. Uh, of course, this is not going to be the final one by any means, but uh, it's definitely giving me a point to start and um, a point to see. I've also added some other pieces, like I've added this piece around the neck, uh, which basically the helmet comes onto. And it's a good uh, practice to have to kind of, um, you know, because if you if I don't have this, you can see that the edge of uh, the costume is kind of frayed and it doesn't look as good. So if you just pop on one of these guys, uh, it makes it work a lot better. Uh, I also have a backpack in the back and I just do that by doing an extract. Uh, and I have um, this piece, uh, oops, I should turn the poly paint on, this piece that is kind of on the back of the neck. So I'm assuming that like some sort of breathing apparatus would go inside of here and it would connect up to the helmet through this kind of uh, flexible part in the back. And uh, there's the helmet. Uh, it's basically also uh, done using the exact same method. You can see some of the projected alphas on here. And also um, I did the visor and uh, with the visor I basically um, applied this material right here which is the reflect map and then uh, went into the reflect map properties and under texture so here it is and oh uh, sorry not texture but uh, material and um, think I don't know if I still have it on here but if you click on reflect map over here and go to modifiers you'll notice that there is a um, there is a image here and you can always click on that image and choose any one of these other images that you have so uh, I basically loaded in some kind of galaxy image and I just used that as the reflected map um, so <laughs> it's funny the entire object got that material but that's not the material I want we just want to go to reflected plastic uh, I think this one over here maybe and uh, that's what we'll use so here we go here we have uh, basically what we're started with uh, and uh, again I just went in here and did a little bit of sculpting and I'll be doing a lot more of that uh, today all right so um, before I get going any questions at all or any um, observations anybody have anything specific you want to ask about uh, regarding this or pretty much anything ZBrush I can answer uh, it to the best of my knowledge and uh, if not then um, just want to kind of go go through a couple of other things here uh, one is if you want to uh, um, watch the older uh, ones of these videos so if you go to um, pic pixelogic.com and then zbrush live you can see here that there's all of the different streams here is where we left it off last time uh, so if you want to watch the last stream, you can watch that. And then uh, I think the one before that is a little bit uh, down below. But if you just want to watch my specific videos, you can always go to presenters. And under presenters, you can um, scroll down a little bit. Uh, and uh, whoa, OK, uh, that was weird. All right. And uh, I'm right here. And uh, if you just go to my page, you can see that all of my videos are listed over here. So I've done uh, about, uh, this is the fifth one, so four previous uh, streams. Uh, the one before this one was a mech, it was this mech right here. And then the one before that was a spaceship, this one right here. And then uh, the one before that was a uh, kind of flying car like you have in Blade Runner, which is this one. And then before that, there is uh, this robot. So uh, all these streams are uh, saved over here. You can catch them over here, or you can always go to the YouTube channel, the Pixelogic channel, and um, do a search for my name. I think there might probably be a playlist of all my stuff as well. Uh, or you can just kind of scroll through the timeline and find all the different videos. But as you can see here, there's just uh, quite a few uh, amazing streamers that have some really cool stuff. Uh, and I also want to mention, uh, if you guys don't know, that the ZBrush Summit is happening next week. Uh, it's kind of a yearly um, event that happens um, 
and, and uh, they're amazing presenters that show uh, stuff from production. Uh, they talk about maybe some future things that are coming out in ZBrush sometimes. And also there's sculpt offs where there's competitions between uh, a lot of different people. I think uh, some of you might have already uh, applied to be part of it. And um, yeah, so if you can, if you get a chance, if you just go to the Pixelogic page. Um, so here, let me see if I can just do it. Let me just duplicate this tab. All right, so, and if you just go to uh, pixelogic.com, I'm sure there'll be a link to it. There it is. Uh, no, that's one. All right, so if you just probably Google Z uh, ZBrush Summit, uh, there will be a link to it. That's really odd that it's not on their front page. Uh, all right, let me see here. Uh, ZBrush Summit. Hopefully, yep, there we go. Google corrected it for me. 2021 ZBrush Summit. There it is. And uh, yep, um, there's a list of all the presentations that are going to be happening. Uh, and uh, you can, by watching this, you can also win some prizes. So it's kind of a fun thing uh, to, um, to do. All right. So uh, if you want to find out more about me and my work, uh, if you go to kermaco.com, K-E-R-M-A-C-O.com, uh, you can see all of my work here. I've got a lot of mechs that I do, and uh, these are available in high resolution. So you can kind of look through here and uh, look at the different mechs that I've done. And also, um, I do other things as well, like characters. And I'm doing a character for this one. So here are some of the character work that I've done. Uh, and vehicles, cars, etc., flying objects. And uh, creatures and monsters. I uh, have done a few of those. And actually, I, I partic participated in the ZBrush Sculpt Off one year and uh, won uh, third place with this piece right here. So um, it's kind of a fun thing to be uh, doing it. Um, am I going to be on the Sculpt Off? No, I'm going to uh, sit out this year um, just because I've got a lot of stuff going on right now. But uh, maybe I'll do it again in the future. Uh, but in the Sculpt Off, I think there's going to be a lot of different people participating. And also, there's going to be another uh, Sculpt Off. Uh, that's going to be by the uh, different streamers. So if you go to presentations here where the schedule is, I think you'll see that there will be some of uh, the streamers, maybe people that you guys watch, uh, are going to be uh, doing a sculpt off. So that's going to be pretty interesting. Uh, it's always um, fun to be doing these. Uh, here we go. Here's one right here. I think there's uh, one, two, three, four, five go up against each other. And then there is another, um, you can see that there's some really amazing things coming up. And there's another five going up against each other as well. I think that's it. Uh, yeah, so there's going to be, no, there's uh, uh, groups of uh, three different groups are going against each other. And I wonder if there's going to be some sort of a, um, uh, a big kind of uh, uh, showdown at the end, or if it's just going to be three winners. Um, all right, so um, that's that. And... Um, Let's see here. Um, I've got a lot of information. If you want to get a hold of me, there's my contact information, and you can always email me. This is all my social media over here. And uh, the social media that I'm most uh, on is uh, Instagram. So this is my Instagram feed. Uh, I highly uh, recommend you follow me. I'm trying to get to 2,000. I'm pretty close. So if you guys can <laughs> chime in and follow me, uh, if you want to see my... Uh, works uh, you can see them here and again I post a lot of stuff that I don't post anywhere else like I, I, this is a character that I worked on that I haven't posted this is a character that I worked on that's similar to what we're working on now um, same here right so uh, I have a lot of stuff that I post in here that is not in uh, that I don't have in the streams or I don't have on my website uh, so whenever I'm working on something and I feel there's something interesting to post I do uh, this piece actually, the latest one is an older piece that I posted. And uh, so yeah, that's my Instagram. And um, I also have a Gumroad where you can get my primitives brush. So my uh, core uh, primitives brush, which has 17 different primitives in it, is free. You can download that at any time. I also have my UI colors. So if you guys like my UI colors, you can get it here as well. And I also have a version of my uh, primitives brush that has some extra pieces that's for a nominal fee and I'm working on a, on a few more assets that are going to be showing up 
uh, in here and also on ArtStation. So uh, keep uh, uh, keep an eye out for that. Uh, I have some uh, in-depth tutorials that I do with the Noman Workshop. So if you go to the Noman Workshop, go to Browse and go by Instructor, and it's between I and L. There I am. And uh, I have one, which is this mech that I uh, make. So I did this, uh, and it's, it's a very long and comprehensive uh, tutorial where I start in Adobe, Adobe uh, Medium. Uh, at the time, it was uh, just called Medium in VR and uh, talk about researching it and do the modeling in ZBrush, talk about UVing, texturing in Substance Painter, rendering it in Keyshot, and compositing in Photoshop. So if you want like a, a course, uh, start to finish, this is a really good one to, to uh, look at. And I also do, uh, I have this video on uh, doing um, 3D scans and how to retopologize 3D scans and uh, get something from the real world into the digital world as a game asset or something like that. So um, anyway, all that information, again, you can get to at kermaco.com, which is my website. So if you just remember that, uh, you can get to all of this stuff uh, from here. All right, so enough of that. Let's get going on this project. So let's see, are there any questions? Um, oh, some welding and metalwork? Okay, yeah, awesome, sure. Um, it'll be great to see these things actually physically made. Uh, you know, it's kind of, uh, I, I 3D print some stuff uh, every now and again, but um, having them appear in metal would, would really be cool. All right, so let's go back to the costume. I'm gonna turn off the poly paint for it, and uh, the helmet is fine. I guess I could hide the helmet for now because we're just gonna be working on the, the costume. And uh, I, don't, I think I will uh, leave this neck piece on, but I'm gonna turn off the poly paint on it just so it kind of shows up as just it shows so it shows up as clay all right so notice here that since this is going to be in the back area over here um, i don't really need to work on this area uh, i haven't really done any work here it's just basically what it was when i uh, did what i did last week so i'm just going to bring the backpack uh, back i guess <laughs> and uh, let's see here this has subdivisions so i'll just go up in subdivisions on it uh, on the, the costume, and uh, let me go up in subdivisions on the backpack. If I have any, I don't, so let me add some. Uh, here I'm gonna turn smoothing off and add a subdivision this way, and then turn smoothing on and add subdivisions this way. And the way I do, the reason I do that is just so the form kind of doesn't get too smoothed out. And I'm gonna do the same thing with this piece back here. I don't think I've got subdivisions on here either. So turn smooth off, divide it once, turn smooth on, divide it a couple of times, and now I, this kind of looks the way I need it to look. And uh, it's always, um, let me bring up the helmet just for a minute here and turn off the poly paint on it. It's always kind of good to see this junction over here, which I don't really like very much, so I'm probably gonna have to do some work there too. Um, all right, so let's say this is what I'm going to be working on, and um, let's go ahead and start working on it. So I'm gonna bring up my Damien Standard Brush, and go in here and uh, let me make sure I'm on this poly, go, uh, poly uh, on this tool and just go here and just kind of start smoothing out some of these areas and uh, maybe bringing out some of these uh, shapes. So let me um, change my brush size. Uh, hey Arturo, how's it going? Glad you can join us. And let's see here quite a few people on that's great um, all right so I'm just gonna go in here and start uh, oh thank you thank you very much uh, all right so I'm just gonna go in here and start bringing up this piece so this is gonna be some sort of a buckle or something like that I might put I might put a, a, a kit bash part on here later on but for now I'm just trying to get flush it out into some sort of a, a shape and sometimes, you know, when I'm working like this, if I don't want to, you know, if I, I'm having a hard time navigating the whole model, uh, it's uh, easier to just um, uh, just hide some of these pieces so that uh, you're just working on the piece that you want to work on. And also, you can even hide some of the other areas. And so you're just basically more focused on that one area that you have. Right, do that. So here I'm just basically using smooth. Let me make sure here my smooth is not too deteriorating. Um, 
because sometimes when you upgrade uh, ZBrush, it you know I, I do some um, tweaks to my smooth brush, and sometimes no, it's fine. Yeah, I just modify the curve a little bit just so it does not destroy the geometry too much. A trick I learned from Maddie Spencer back in the day. Still use it till to till the um, until now. It's really useful. All right. Right, and I'm, you know, this is uh, the topology here is is a sound topology. So I do have uh, subdivision levels on this, uh, all the way down. So as I go up in subdivision levels, you'll notice that I'm getting a little bit of uh, choppy areas, but that's okay. I will probably re, uh, you know, if I'm going to, if this is going to be a game asset, I probably will re-topo it and uh, also. Um, extract out the uh, normal maps for it. But uh, right now, it's just a concept. So I don't really care about that. Uh, what are you going to use uh, the model? OK, yeah, that's what you were asking. So yeah, I could use it for a video game, or I could use it for um, a variety of different uh, things. Uh, right now, I, I don't really have a purpose in mind. Uh, right now, it's just basically uh, a um, it's just basically a concept piece. So, you know, um, so this would probably be like a hero model in a, in a movie, uh, like a, you know, a video game or something like that. And then if, um, if they like it, you know, they can, the costuming department will, will make the suit, you know, they can use some of the, um, data from here to 3d print some of the parts. Um, and then, um, they can sew the costume so that's one one kind of uh place for it so like if it's a star trek or something like that that's what they would be doing or star wars or any one of those shows and um and also if it's a video game this could be a character skin let's say um there's a space shooter that was going to come out uh, i don't know if it's out yet or not uh, but it's kind of a shooter that's in on, on kind of a space um, you know, kind of like a space station type of, you know, current day, near future type of uh, thing. So if they, they could use this as a character skin. And in that case, you know, a different type of work would need to be done on it. But, you know, uh, they could use some of the assets right from here. Um, I, I usually work very clean uh, topology. Um, like a lot of artists would probably just do this in Dynamesh uh, and it would be quicker and... Um, the geometry would, would conform better. I mean, I've got like how many? I've got six subdivision levels on this, and it's the whole thing too, right? So this whole costume, even with the shoes, is um, right now sitting at a uh, little uh, over th two million polys, right? And that's a lot of polys, but also that's a lot of area to cover. So um, you kind of have to, um, you know, I mean, the detail work that I'm doing is really not going to. Um, not going to show up really well if it's, if it's up close, but if it's from this distance, it will be just fine. All right. The other thing we're going to do today, besides just doing some of this uh, sculpting cleanup, <clears throat> is um, maybe putting on some more accessories, some packs and stuff. But you can see here, like this er this area over here is just, you know, once you get up close, it's pretty messy, but just with a little bit of uh, work it could look really clean or as clean as it could be at this um, level so I'm basically using a couple of brushes here I'm just using Damien standard I'm using H polish and that's it I'll be using some other brushes in certain areas but uh, mostly I'm just working in this area and also notice that this is a symmetrical piece so I'm working in symmetry so when I'm doing cleanup on one area it's doing it on the other side too which is a big time saver Um, but I will, uh, you know, at some point break that symmetry. But most clothing is symmetrical. At least the, the patterns are, and then, uh, you know, maybe the prints on them or different things are, are different. So this area over here is probably an area where she, if she bends, it needs to be elastic. So I'll just go in and kind of create some sort of a, a pattern here that is more elastic. So 
So basically most of the, the types of work I like to do are just design work, so concept design work, which basically is coming up with the ideas, problem solving, coming up with, um, with things that basically um, would, would work, would look good. Um, and then, you know, the technical stuff, even though I can do it and I'm aware of it, it's usually not where I would like to spend most of my time uh, just because I'm better at doing this stuff. There are people that probably are faster and more efficient than me uh, in the kind of the nitty gritty uh, parts of, of, of doing the, the costume. All right, so that looks okay. And again here, I'm just basically manually doing this, but there's probably, if I used an alpha and rolled it on, it could probably work as well. Again, it all depends on how much time you have on a project. Um, a lot of, um, a lot of um, um, times, you know, I uh, spend a little bit of time before I jump on any project that I'm on uh, planning it out based on the amount of time that I have because I want to meet my deadline. That's probably one of the most important things uh, to me is to be able to get to as much of what is needed um, during my uh, before the deadline and then leaving some time for revision revisions after because there's always going to be you know there's always going to be revisions that are needed I don't think I've ever done a single job that has been that has not needed any revisions there's a lot of people that get paid to uh, put in their two cents and gosh darn it they always do <laughs> All right. Um, all right, so let's see. Um, okay, great. Um, yeah, I, I, uh, I, I use Maya as well, uh, Arturo. That's kind of, uh, you know, my, my 3D application of choice right now, although I am learning Blender and I am liking it a lot. But, you know, Maya's kind of what everybody in the studios uses. So whenever I get a job, unless, you know, um, they don't mind uh, me using Blender, uh, I have to use Maya. Especially on their, in, at their location, very few studios, unfortunately, have Blender installed. And if they do, it's, you know, they don't really have a workflow for it or a, they don't have a pipeline for it. They might for very specific things, but in general, they still, you know, most studios that I work at uh, or freelance at uh, mostly use mostly use Maya. I think the best thing you could do is be such a good artist that, you know, you can impose whatever tool you want to use. I know some artists that are really good in 3ds Max and whenever they are going to work on something, they say, it's 3ds Max, or you get somebody else. So the studio is like, okay, use 3ds Max. It's fine. All right, I'm kind of trying to negotiate this edge over here. And again, I always am zooming in and out just to see how it looks. And it looks like this area here needs some sort of a buckle or something. So I'll probably um, do it. Um, <clears throat> so let, I'll, I'm going to do it in a kind of a different way here. I'm just going to go ahead and add a. Um, well, let me do that later. Let me just continue to sculpt here. Uh, I, I worked on this area quite a bit, so it's looking as fleshed out as it could be. Um, now, H polish is really one of those kind of, you know, one of my favorite brushes in ZBrush. And um, I really like it because you can do so much with it. And uh, you always kind of get different results with different radii. And also, you also have to remember that if you hold Alt down, it, it, it's, it does a different function. So uh, between those two, you can see here that I basically made that panel that was a little bit wonky uh, really nice and smooth. Another thing I'm doing here is the reason why I'm using reflected plastic is because, whoa, uh, is because um, it gives me a little bit of reflection and gives me a little bit of uh, interesting specular. So usually when I'm working, I either use, I use one or three different materials. I Sometimes uh, I use basic material and basic material is really good to, I mean, you see here, a lot of things came up that I hadn't seen before. So I go between basic material 
and then I go with basic material 2 which adds a little bit of specular and that gives me even more stuff that I didn't see uh, so and um, and then I jump to reflected plastic which looks really good and um, and yeah so between those three materials I think you know are the ones that I use just to kind of get a good sense of what I'm working on uh, if I'm working on a car or some hard surface like high polish uh, area I've got some materials of my own that I've created um, and I'll show you guys those uh, which are over here materials and there are these materials right here these are surface development materials so I've got a reflection map uh, like so which is pretty much like the reflection map before so if I'm working on kind of a really polished hard, hard surface I would do that there's the stripes one which is also really good here let me make this so it's not like a, you know here we go maybe even one line would be fine okay so you can see here that um, this kind of shows it in kind of an aluminum foil kind of way and then I've got thick horizontal, thin horizontal, zebra stripes. Uh, and you can see here that this is really not working because this is a, a costume. It's got a lot of different details and, and changes in shape. So none of these are working well for it. But um, if I was working on this, for example, I probably would use uh, this uh, stripes um, material. But um, but this is really, you know, this is really not a hard surface project. This is more of a... Um, this is more of a, um, you know, kind of a, a space outfit. And I'm assuming that some of these parts are, you know, uh, reinforced with some sort of uh, hard plastic. And some of them are just kind of uh, some sort of plastic, you know, rubbery plastic or uh, cloth material that is pretty strong and, uh, and tight, uh, airtight so that, you know, they can... Uh, do their spacewalks and things like that. All right, uh, let's see, this piece right here looks good. And this is a perfect area where I could add another part. So let me do that. So whoa, um, I'm just gonna go ahead and mask this area off. And I'm just gonna apply a rough mask. And again, I'm just assuming something is going to go on top of this. So I'm not really gonna worry about the underlying uh, area. So I'm just going to do something like this. And then once I'm done with that, I'm going to modify this mask a little bit. Um, all right. I'm just going to go to the masking menu here. How's my voice coming through, by the way? Is it nice and loud? Can you hear me OK? Do I need to move my mic closer? I just want to make sure I'm coming across well. All right. So here I'm just going to um, uh, sharpen that mask so I can get crisper edges and I'm going to shrink it down so I'm going to shrink that mask down sharpen the mask again right so I'm kind of getting what I want I've kind of, it, it missed a little area over here so I'm just going to go ahead and add that back in and sharpen uh, shrink the mask sharpen it again and that's pretty much a good kind of uh, area where that piece could go and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use, uh, you know, basically, you know, there's a, the way I would do, do it before is I'd go into the subtool menu and go down to extract and extract it out. But then I would have to extract it out, separate it out, read uh, Z mesh, et cetera, et cetera. But instead of doing all that, I've I purchased a, a plugin uh, from, um, from ArtStation called uh, Extract Pro plus which is a few dollars and it does all that work for me so it, it's pretty handy all right so here's that piece and it, it actually probably separated out for me as a separate subtool yep it did so now i'm just going to solo on that piece and there it is and uh, what i'm going to do here is um you know there's this part right here that got added that i didn't want um, so let me see if that's easily deletable let me look at the topology it looks like it is so i'm just going to go to my um Z modeler brush and I'm going to do a delete and let's do uh, oops I thought I meant it to be a polygon delete and poly loop and let's delete this one oops not that one but there you all know that goes all the way up um, looks like a lot of these are going all the way up all right so another way to do it is to just um, here's another interesting trick you just go into here again in polygon mode 
and you go to polygroup and you do it by brush radius okay so I'm just gonna go here and do this like so and that's good and then just do it again over here like so and then just um, delete that polygroup let me get this these two edges in there too and then delete hidden so now I've gotten rid of some of those points. I've got a little bit, uh, a couple of hanging spragglers there. So I'm just going to go again to Zmodeler, delete a single poly, and just delete this one, and delete these three, and that's good. And now what I also want to do is I want to get a, poly, a kind of a ring that go, is going to go all around this piece. And uh, let me um, bring this back. Okay, so it looks like by doing this I missed some points here, but it's no big deal. I'm just going to go to draw size and or uh, sorry my move the move brush and just move these into place like so and uh, move this down a little bit like so and move this over all right that's kind of more or less you know the the area that it is and uh, so now I'm just gonna go ahead and re zero mesh this one more time all right, and that gives me full geometry, but I don't really need all this uh, topology, so I'm gonna zero mesh it one more time, but at half the amount of polygons. And let's keep going down in number until we get to something like this. That's good, and I just wanna make sure there's a poly loop going all around this, and there isn't, so let me put one in there. Geometry, uh, edge loop over here, and uh, go to one loop maybe two group loops there it is so that basically gives me a nice clean loop around the object and again with the move brush I'm just going to shape this in the shape that was the mold underneath like so that's good and let's do one more zero mesh and hopefully this one will give me that loop that goes around. A good way to find that out is just to use Zmodeler and uh, go to Polygroup, Poly Loop. And yep, so you can see here that it's going around. That's exactly what I wanted. But when okay, I inadvertently deleted these two polygons, which I don't want to do. And uh, it's always whenever you have delete on in uh, Zmodeler, it's always a good idea to go and take it off because. Where whenever you click, you might inadvertently delete something that you don't want. So here, I'm going to zero mesh this one more time, but I'm going to keep the poly groups, keep groups, zero mesh it. Let's see if we can get something with lower resolution. Uh, no, I think I think we have our what we need here. All right. So now that I've got this, I'm going to go into uh, dynamic subdiv and give it some thickness. Turn smoothing off and uh, offset is zero, but I want to move it outwards, like so. Maybe not so much, and uh, maybe something like that is okay. All right, so that's good. Now I'm going to not need any subdivisions. I'm just going to keep it low resolution still, and I'm going to go ahead and apply this. So now I've got this geometry as uh, the geometry that I need. Now what I want to do here is this is all kind of bend and worn out of shape and I don't want that so I'm going to go ahead and select this piece. Uh, maybe uh, here let me solo this out so we don't have the rest of the stuff there. And also I don't need these pieces. I've just got this going on and bring up my gizmo which is way over here and if I want this to be flat I just flatten it out like this and move it forward. Let's bring everything back. So now I've got this piece just kind of coming out. Oops. Like so. That's good. And I'm going to turn symmetry off just for a second. And put this in the center. Resize it to be, oops, maybe mask the back parts. And resize the front part so it kind of has a little bit of an edge like this. That looks good. And another thing I want to do here is maybe add some edge loops over here. So I'm just going to insert some edge loops. Um, like so. Maybe unmask it first. There's an edge loop there. Add one as a border edge here and another one as a border edge here. And um, just kind of hit this edge a little bit with the smooth brush 
of course I don't have symmetry on so I'm gonna go back and turn that on before I do that all right here we go and just smooth out this edge and let's kind of turn off the polyframe so we can see what this is looking like so maybe this is going to be a piece that's going to be in front like this uh, that looks good all right uh, Strawberry King, thank you very much that you can hear me fine. I really appreciate you letting me know. And I'm going to turn AccuCurve on here. AccuCurve is a really nice uh, capability with the Move Brush, which can, can give you these sharp angles that you can angles that you can create, like so. All right, so there's this, like that. All right. Oh wow, we're doing good on time. All right, so there's that piece like that. And uh, if I want to make some modifications to it, I might later, but right now I'm just gonna leave it at that. Um, and I might want to change this a little bit from, you know, I don't want it to be straight like this. I want it to be at an angle. So uh, I'm just gonna go back to polyframe mode Oops. on it. And I'm going to um, delete these edge loops like so mask this part invert that mask and maybe try and rotate this let's see does it look better like that or does it look better like this like looks better like that maybe a little bit further out that looks fine so again i'm just basically putting in the the basic um uh the basic look of this thing and of course we'll add details to it later on I also could have used the kit bash part, but I, I want to uh, use the underlying um, design just to kind of augment this further. So this would be like some sort of a you know device that shows uh, what the um, you know maybe it shows how much oxygen this person has in their tank. Maybe it communicates some other information for people that are looking at this person to know um, what is going on with them. And here, uh, let's see, um, I'm gonna do that trick again where I'm going to make this front part flat. So let me bring that up, uh, select this part, bring this up, make it flat, so there it is. And uh, I'm going to add a little bit of a bevel to this corner edge over here. So the good news is I do have an edge loop going around, which is fine. So I'm just gonna go to one and bevel and poly loop bevel uh, edge loop complete let's do that sorry not poly loop but here we go i'll just add a little bit of a bevel there maybe let's add one for good measure over here as well and let me insert an edge loop in the middle just to kind of balance it out and uh, that's looking okay maybe clean up the topology in the center and there's that okay so that piece is uh, pretty much kind of the basic for it is done and so um, the other thing that would need to be done after this is uh, <clears throat> let me just duplicate it real quick so I have a copy of the clean topology version and there's this and then I can just divide it a, oops uh, divide it a couple of times and then go in with the Damien standard and start thinking of what kind of design would be in here Right, so maybe like there's some sort of a, a knob over here like this. And this is just me kind of playing around. Uh, I have a clean version of this that is over there. And maybe this is like some sort of a screen like here. So. That would have some sort of, you know, data on it charts and, and uh, different types of um, indicators and whatnot. And again, I don't really need to flush this out. I'm just right now doing some ideation. Maybe there'll be like a, a couple of different knobs over here or like different areas where if they're running out of air, there's a socket and somebody can just uh, <clears throat> share their air by, by sticking a tube into here. And uh, yeah, so I'm just basically um, you know, playing around, getting some um, 
some ideas of what would be a good, you know what I should do is I should use the new rounder brushes. Let me do that. So here's bevel, bevel. This one is really nice. So I can do like some nice features like this. These new brushes are so awesome. Uh, if you guys don't know, these are brushes that they added in uh, <clears throat> the latest version of ZBrush 2021.7. And uh, it's, it's really great to do things like, oops, like what I'm doing right now. All right, so that kind of gives me a little bit of an idea of the concept. I'm gonna leave that there um, <clears throat> and not mess with it. Um, but um, I think, let's see, has it been an hour? It's been 45 minutes, so this would be a good time to drop a quick save. So let me do that, uh, get a swig of tea, and see if you guys have any questions. Okay, so how did I flatten the piece? Good, good question. Um, yeah, I, I basically use scaling. That's right. So uh, I'll do it. I'll do it with another one here. Uh, let's wait for the program to finish. Um, <clears throat> This shouldn't take that long. It, it should be done in a, in, a, in a second here. So this would be a good time to ask me any questions that you ha might have or um, any observations. You guys know that if you don't ask any questions, then I'll start asking the questions. So. Um, Strawberry King, no, I'm not going to do the sculpt off this year, unfortunately. I'm, uh, I've got a couple of projects that are going on that are keeping me pretty busy, so um, they're, not, they're not work projects, they're life projects, so I'm going to skip this year. Maybe next year. All right, so the way I would flatten it, if I were to do it over to, for, for here, right, so I would just basically, um, let me uh, go down in subdivision levels here to here, and let's say I want to flatten out this, uh, this, um, this polygroup right here, so I'm just going to isolate that polygroup. So you can see how it's wobbly and everything. So if you press W, you get the gizmo. Uh, and if you, you know, you uh, go to the, um, if you click on this little map button, I guess that's the best thing to call it. But this little button over here, it goes to the center of that piece, right? And then uh, you can always move this back and forth to where you want that flattening to happen. But I'm going to do it at the center. And then you scale it this way, and then that flattens it out, right? So just as simple as that. Um, it's a nice little trick to use, uh, and I use that all the time uh, when I want to get things to be coplanar. Um, but yeah, hopefully that answered your question. Um, how did I get the base suit shell, uh, Ruben? You're asking the, the question. Uh, well, uh, that's a you know you have to watch part. I would say watch the second episode of this. So if you go to um, here I can kind of maybe just fast forward the video to that point. But if you go to my, if you go to ZBrush uh, channel, the Pixelogic channel on YouTube, and uh, you go to my video, my last one over here, and I I'll turn the audio off. And uh, you can see here that uh, I basically start off with a base mesh, which basically is this model right here. And you can find these on ArtStation or Gumroad uh, for I don't know four or five dollars or whatever. Um, I basically have taken one and modified it so that it has my um, specific topology that I need, and I've polygrouped it in such a way where I can, you know, as I show you here, I can isolate different things. And then uh, once I have that, I basically projected a bunch of patterns on it, and um, once I have what I want. I can just go ahead and uh, get rid of the head and the hands, and then I'm just left with that that suit, right? That's my approach. Uh, one other way you can also do it, uh, and I'll just mention that as well, is if you go to uh, zebra ships with quite a few neat, um, uh, quite a few neat. If you go to uh, if you, if you go to uh, the um, Lightbox, or um, sorry, not Lightbox, but Spotlight. Uh, is it Lightbox or Spotlight? I forget. Let me see here. That's not what I wanted to do, but that's fine. Oh, if you go to Lightbox, that's right. So if you go to Lightbox, and Lightbox pro is here up in the in the original menu, it's up here. But if you go to Lightbox and you um, go to, let me get this back to where it was. If you go to either projects, 
So go to project over here. And uh, in project, let me expand this up a bit. There, are, there is a, a new human male and human female character. So there's one here and one here. So you can load those in. And then if you go under tool, uh, there's quite a few human characters as well. So there's this one, which I uh, used to use quite a bit, the Nick Z human uh, male one. Uh, but then there's an, uh, Julie, which is a female one. There's Demo Soldier. There's Super Average Man, uh, which has been in ZBrush for, uh, from forever ago. So you can use any one of these if you don't want to uh, get something new. But um, but yeah, um, there's there's quite a few uh, different uh, ma uh, mannequins or or figures that you can use. Uh, I've I've made my own over the years and uh, prefer to use those. All right, so let's get back to work here. Um, this guy hopefully that answers your question. Uh, scalp face, should I also include stuff like hair, eyebrows, eye details? Uh, yeah. um, you know, you're welcome, Ruben. Uh, okay, so um, as far as eyes and hair and everything is concerned, so for my model, so which is this one right here, let me um, hide all this other stuff. For my model, which is this, uh, I have, like I just have like a kind of a, a hair thing like this. It's just something I created like really quickly, but I also have like eyebrows uh, and um, like here I've got the eyebrows and that's geometry. Uh, I also have uh, eyeballs for her and um, yeah, so you know, uh, these add a lot more to it. Um, some of the models that you buy come with this, but it, you know, you can use that same extract method that I did to, whoops, to go ahead and extract out um, to extract out these pieces and then retopologize them. And I think that's what I did with these eyebrows. I don't think these eyebrows came with that model. Um, so, you know, you go to polyframe and click on this. So you can see this is just like a very simple uh, zero meshed piece that I extracted out and so is this. Actually, I think this I did using the the, the um, uh, the retopology capability of just using uh, a plane and then just extracting it out to get that type of uh, um, mascara kind of uh, look on top here, and you can also make lashes. You know, lashes are easy to make as well. I don't I don't use them on this one because it's going to you know you're you're going to be seeing her from a distance, so it doesn't really matter. And this is aimed at making a costume. You can see I don't have the breasts separated out. I don't have, uh, you know, I have some details that will show up through clothes, but I don't really have a lot of detail. I could probably get rid of the belly button too, but I just left it there because it is a good landmark to use. And I can always flatten it out if I want to. So, um, yeah, so that's kind of how you can get, um, you know, you can make, you know, you can start out with something and then kind of customize it to your own. And over the years, you can keep adding to it and modifying it until you get exactly what you want. All right, so let's move back to the costume here and turn polyframe off. Let's go back to that piece that we just created, which is over here, like so. Okay, so there's that. And uh, maybe, you know, we're, we're, uh, she has some packs or something that she has on here. And for those, I can either... Um, again do the extract or I can just use my brush which um, is over here right uh, like that and my brush just basically has these primitives and I'm going just going to go ahead and choose a symbol simple cube 2 so uh, cube 1 cube 2 cube 4 uh, the, these basically uh, tell me how much subdivisions there are cube 1 is just a once you know one side one uh, subdivision uh, 2 is two subdivisions four is three subdivisions. So I'm just going to use a, a two here and then click and drag. Oh, uh, this isn't going to work because this is a, uh, this model has multiple subdivision levels. So it's going to say that that's not going to work. But what I can do is always duplicate it and go in here and delete the, or just go to like maybe somewhere in the middle, delete lower, delete higher. So this basically will be a, um, just a kind of a medium resolution version of this suit without the actual detail on it, which is fine. It's kind of like a proxy. And uh, then I will go ahead and go turn everything back off. And now I can do that. So I'm just going to add a couple of cubes over here just as the starting points. 
for those packs like so and um, then I'm just gonna go to Zmodeler and you can see here that if I turn polyframe on that this has uh, basically these two parts and um, also if I solo this out you'll see that this part this uh, suit is now masked and these are kind of standing out outside of it so I can go in here and start modeling uh, on this so if I want to uh, let's say Q mesh and uh, flat island I can just go down here and make oops, these stand out like that and maybe uh, this one push it in like so and then just rotate these into position maybe the packs go like that and then I can scale them down as well now the scaling is kind of tricky because uh, you want to make sure you've got local symmetry on otherwise it's it scales it to the center and you get some wonky looking shapes so there are the packs like so just move them into place maybe they go a little bit over here like so and this is you know maybe these contain some sort of tools or um, some sort of you know stuff that she needs to use so there's that and I do have some subdivisions on here I usually don't want to have them but it's fine and then here I'm just going to QMesh polygroup all or polygroup island let's say and I'm just going to pull these parts out like this so I have that kind of overage and again as I hit D this will uh, subdivide it so I can decide whether I want this to be smooth or I want it to be uh, kind of more harsh like this or anything in between so at any point in time I can always go to dynamic and uh, adjust the Q grid to get something in between really harsh and really kind of soft like this alright so that's that and then I'm gonna go ahead and separate these out uh, so I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, split uh, unmasked points or split mass points and just now I just have the packs if I go to solo I can hide that proxy model uh, like so and now I've got the packs turn on off polyframe and that's what they look like now these look pretty boring so let's go ahead and make them look a little bit spacier and more interesting so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add some uh, poly uh, edge loops but I want to add edge loops right in the center so I'm going to go ahead and uh, choose multiple edge loops but specified resolution is one so when I click here these edge loops are in the middle and the next thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and slide uh, edge loop partial I want to slide this in like so uh, let's see how about edge loop how about just edge Okay, so this edge loop over here is kind of giving me a hard time. I'm going to get rid of it. And just by holding Alt down. Okay, so now I can, oops, and now I can slide this easily like so. <coughs> Excuse me. Ugh. All right, so now this is kind of, uh, it's giving me a little bit more of visual interest. It's not kind of a, just a flat box looking thing. And I might want to do that same thing on top here as well. Now this is going to be tough because uh, I definitely need this kind of adage, but I can always QMesh this um, flat island, polygroup flat island. Where are you? Flat island. And push this in. so and now I can try that out and see if that kind of adds a good, a good visual interest and it does so that's good and then what I can do here is if I want to pull this part back out I can just go ahead and Q mesh a single poly and just uh, not Q -mesh a single poly but poly group a single poly and just create a new poly group here like so oops and I'm going to try something uh, a little bit different here where um, maybe I don't have I have this and I have these three like that so this is basically going to be an interesting uh, shape I'm going to slide this point over to the side like so right and now I'm just going to uh, and also just like let's try and not have like a harsh angle over here so I'm going to bring this over as close as I can to this edge and I'm going to try and get rid of this type of pinch over here it looks like this is the best it's going to be which is fine and now I can just Q mesh 
this polygroup island and pull this out back out so now it's kind of some sort of a, a thing and it's got this area where she can grab it and open it uh, up easily and uh, now I'm going to go ahead and do a slide edge loop partial let's see if I can do this and it, uh, it does do it it brings this into I don't know why so I'm going to mask that area so it doesn't so I'm just going to mask this part right here like so and just bring this part down a little bit so it kind of uh, I don't know if that's adding anything to it I think it's fine all right and then one last thing I want to do is make this a little bit thicker and push it in so it's more kind of flush with her suit okay so there's that and this looks cool what I'm going to do here is just duplicate this by using control and now what I want to do is I want these to you know there I want another pack but I don't want this kind of angle to be in the front I want it to be in the back so um, did I at some point I guess I did I wanted to QMesh this out like so but then I somehow lost it now it's back okay that's good now let's do that copy again all right so what I want to do here is I want to again split masks points so I'm just left with these and what I want to do is I want to mirror these uh, in the uh, Z direction oops so I'm just going to do mirror and weld in Z like so and now oops oh, um, that happened because I had local symmetry on so I'm going to do it this way and this is exactly what I wanted so oh, no it's still doing it on its own thing all right I think the reason why that's happening and uh, I need you guys to I need to um, just a second I'll be right back that all right we're back okay so um, what's happening here is that I've got two of these right so it's mirroring it uh, I think it's mirroring it in X also so let me just make sure that I don't have X on no, I don't I just have Z on okay so I'm just gonna move this back a little bit and let's do the mirror and weld let's see if that does it nope okay so um, for this to work I guess what I need to do is not have symmetry on I'm gonna turn symmetry off and let's see if this does it still is not doing it one last thing I'm gonna do here is just uh, solo this out and get rid of one of them delete hidden and mirror and weld it in Z I think where it is matters uh, in space so if I bring up the floor for example I can see that this is what it's mirroring is this area right here so I'm just gonna move it back here and then do the mirror and weld okay so that's exactly what I wanted uh, let me bring solo back off turn the floor off okay so that's the piece that I want right here so I'm going to uh, again just solo this out select this delete the hidden part and let's move this to the center and do this now I want this to be aligned with the pack and the way to do that is to find a the axis like let's say this one if I hold alt down and click and drag now it's basically where I want it to be and I can move it to the center of the object like so okay good now I've got this piece and I'm going to move it and position it to where it needs to be over on this side right here like so position it to exactly where it needs to go right so this is kind of creating an interesting uh, pack for her and now what I want to do is uh, have that be on the other side so I'm just gonna go in here uh, turn mirror and weld back on to Z click on mirror and weld and now I've got it there and I want all the packs to be together so I'm just going to merge it back down so now there are the two packs right uh, and did it get rid of the polygroups or no it just repolygrouped them 
One of the new things that they added in uh, the new version of ZBrush, which is really, really nice, is the ability to um, re, like for example here, you know, it, it kind of looks like the polygroup colors are, you know, orange and green. Uh, and um, maybe, you know, if I want a little bit more contrast, what I can do is I can go into the polygroup menu and there is something called um, regroup visible, which is really nice. And you can just keep hitting that until you get some more contrasting colors. Uh, and this is something that I've been, I was hoping for for a very long time and I'm glad it's been added. So I can continue to do this until I get some grouping that works for me. All right, so there's that. And I don't know why, did I choose a dark color? That's what's going on. Okay, so here we go. Here are the, um, here are the packs and that's done. So let's go ahead and start uh, working on the shoes. Now the shoes, I don't really want them to be integrated into this here. I don't want them to be all one piece in the, in the suit. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to isolate out the shoes. So the way to do that is I'll just go over here. Now I do have polygroups as you can see here for different pieces. Like I could isolate this just the shoe part, but where this boot is cutting off is not really where um, that polygroup is, is, is uh, different. So what I can do here is I can, uh, but there is enough to go on, I think. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to uh, go down in polygroup levels and go to Z modeler and with Z modeler, certain things you can work on with different subdivision le levels. And I think polygrouping is one of them. So I'm going to polygroup poly loop and polygroup this, these three polygons here like so. So now this is its own polygroup. And now if I go back up in subdivision levels, um, I can see that, you know, more or less, this is working out. It's, it's separating out the boot, um, more or less. Um, you know, this one, this one polygroup over here could, could work as well. Let me see if I can uh, go down in subdivision levels some more. Let me turn on polyframe. And let me see if I can, uh, if this, yeah, here we go. So I can do this at different subdivision levels, which is kind of a cool thing to be able to do. So now I've got uh, different polygroups for the boots. And what I can do here is I can just go down all the way back down here to this and it looks like I've got some stragglers here. So I'm going to polygroup a single poly and get that guy, this one, this one, and these two. That's all good and separate out these pieces like so. I guess one quick way of doing it is just to do this. Right, so now I've got the boots. I think I need one more layer of polygons. There it is. Go all the way around. That's good. So basically what I'm going to do now is I'm going to split this out into a separate subtool. But I don't want to um, I don't want to reproject. I don't want to do a lot of the, the things that I would re need to do. So I'm just going to duplicate this. So I've got a separate copy, right? I've got two copies of this. And then for this new copy that I created, I'm going to delete the hidden parts. Uh, okay, what is going on? Oh, I'm, I'm, all right, here we go. Uh, A, delete hidden. All right, so now I just have the, the boots left. And let me see if I still have subdivision levels on them. I do, so here are the boots with their subdivision levels, so that's all good. And then the top one right here has the entire costume in addition to the boots. So uh, one thing I want to do here is I want to get rid of the boots over here so they don't overlap. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to, it's kind of a nifty trick, is just to go in here and uh, just use the shift key to um, resize. And you can see what's going on underneath. I'm just basically shrinking this thing down to a knob. I could delete it, but it doesn't really matter. So now this would probably be kind of the foot part. And then there are the shoes as a separate subtool. And again, that separate subtool has subdivision levels, so I can work on the shoes separately. And let's do that. Uh, all right, I see a bunch of questions. Uh, InfoSquid, hello, how's it going? Um, uh, yes, InfoSquid, this is recorded. So if you want to watch it, uh, you can watch it later on. You can watch the beginning of it. Uh, oh, are you asking if this specific thing is recorded? It's not recorded. This is happening live right now. 
but it is also being recorded and you can watch it after the fact if you wanted to. All right, so all right, so now we got the shoe over here and we got some details on it. What I want to first do is I don't want it this. I want this lip to kind of um, not be kind of a, just a sharp uh, group like this. So what I'm going to do here is uh, just go down in subdivision levels to here. And I'm going to duplicate this like so. So I've got two copies of it. And then with the duplicate, I'm going to delete the higher subdivision levels. So I just have this like that. And then I'm going to go ahead and just close this hole. So close, bam, and I don't really care about the, the polygroups here. But if I did want good topology, so that's a good thing to talk about. So I could leave this like this, but this is really kind of triangulated topology in here, and maybe I don't want that. So what I could do here is I just I can just go to um, zero mesher and uh, zero mesh this again. But this time, what I want to do is I want to keep the groups. So uh, I'm going to uh, change the adaptive size down to zero. And, and let's see here, I've got this. I want to keep the same number of polygons and just zero mesh this. All right, so there's that. Oh, I wanted to keep the groups too. That's important. All right, so there it is. So now it's the same kind of shoe. It's zero meshed it. Um, I don't know if I kind of like it, what it did. Uh, I can always hold Alt down and see if the other algorithm gives me better results. Uh, not much better. And I can also try the legacy to see if that gives me better results. Uh, yep, that does give me somewhat better results. Uh, I'm still not happy with what's going on up here. But again, I don't really care about this area. I just care that there's an edge loop going all the way around, which is good. So I think this will work. Okay, so now that I've got the decent topology, what I'm going to do here is divide this a few times. Uh, maybe let's go to six. So this is looking pretty horrible like so. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and uh, hide everything else, but just show these two. So I'm just showing uh, the actual boot and I'll go to the highest subdivision levels on it. Where are you? Yep. So I've got this detail that I sculpted earlier. I mean, it's not really that precious. I could start over, but I, I did do some work. So I'm going to try to stick with that. And then I've got this one, which is kind of the, um, you can see here is kind of the smoothed out version of it. So then I'm just going to use the project option here. Project all. Let's see what that gives me. Just like with the defaults, um, it's going to churn for a little bit. And it's going to try, oh, <laughs> that was not good. All right, no worries, we'll do it over. All right, uh, yeah, Lemma Land, I can. Let's just wait for ZBrush to come back up. It just had a weird, uh, nasty crash. I don't know why, but um, but it happens every once in a while. That's why I quick saved earlier, so I should be able to jump right back to that quick save. I probably did lose a few things, but that's fine. I can always um, I can always uh, kind of catch up. All right, here we go. Yep, no worries. And let's go to my quick save. And this was the last one. Uh, it didn't even have a crash save. All right, that's good. You guys can see some of the uh, projects I've been working on. How are we doing on time? We're doing good. Should load in a few minutes. Let's see. Um, and you wanted to know about the uh, edge loop tab for under dynamics of div geometry. Yeah, there's a lot of goodies in there. Um, 
So as soon as this comes up, we'll see where we are. I don't think I created the pad, the packs, but that's fine. I can recreate them. Um, one of the things that you know really frustrates my students when I uh, am teaching is you know they get really frustrated when things crash, and I tell them that when that happens, it gives you a chance to redesign something. So um, you know you might have a different take on what you were working on earlier. All right, so let's go to and explain some of the stuff that you were asking about, which is, let's say I just have a, uh, let me just uh, go to my um, Sir Polish 3D, uh, right, that's okay. And uh, let me just go in here and do this one more time. And let's say I insert a cube like this, okay. And I don't need that, I don't need these stars. I'm gonna delete those two. All right, so let's say I've got a cube like this and let's turn symmetry on because this looks really wonky when uh, symmetry is not on. Okay, and I don't really need to see 14 poly, uh, my poly count, uh, eight is fine. And so what you're talking about is under geometry, uh, edge loop, this menu right here, right? So um, this has a lot of really uh, good utilities in it, uh, like group, group loops and panel loops. Um, and uh, a lot of these are features uh, of those groups. So for example, if I want, if I, if, let's say if I just select this uh, and I want an edge loop, I can just say edge loop and it will add an edge loop around that open edge, right? So whenever you have an open edge, it will just add an edge loop. And you can choose uh, how much the displace amount is. So here, if I have this as, uh, as high as, let's say, that, and I click on edge loop, now you can see that there's a little bit of displacement of that. Uh, or if you want it to be flush, you can leave that as zero. If you want it to be crisp, you can click on crisp. So that's basically this one group over here. Group loops is really good because what group loops allows you to do is it just basically allows you to add a bunch of edge loops. So let's say here, I'm gonna delete the hidden part. And I wanna add some edge loops around this open edge. Let me turn double on so you can see the inside, right? So what I wanna do is I wanna add some uh, edge loops around here. So if I click on group loops, uh, what's going on here? Let's see. All right. So I want, let's say I want just one loop. I want one loop to go around this area. And then this is the polish. So I don't want any polish. I just want, let's say I just want to add three loops. So now uh, it adds, I don't know why it's adding them over there. Um, let's turn triangle off. So now it's basically adding three loops. I think it's just going over, over to here. Let me just do something real quick this might make more sense. Right, let's say it's some, I have something like this. Uh, that's what's going on. Right. Um, I have something like this. Right, and what I wanna do here is I want to add edge loops around this outside area, right? So if I say uh, group loops, um, it's going to add an edge loop around the groups. So here, I'm gonna go ahead and, um, I know what I'm doing wrong. So I'm going to polygroup, poly loop. Okay, so this is one uh, loop here. So this is one uh, polygroup, and this inside part is another polygroup. The colors are a little bit similar. Let me go ahead and do that thing I showed earlier, which is go to polygroups and regroup visible. So I can get kind of, here we go, more kind of contrasting colors. Jeez, can we get like two? Okay, here we go. So, the, so group loops, what it will do is it'll put edge loops around the different groups here. So um, go back to here. If I say group loops, you can see that it put an edge loop in here uh, to kind of uh, delineate that group. So here, if I insert another edge loop and then I polygroup this poly loop. So what I wanna do here is I want edge loops around these different groups, right? So if I say group loops, it's going to put in, I don't know why it keeps doing this. Maybe just go back to my cube, this will be a lot easier. And just choose one of, the, maybe a sphere might be a better solution for this. So sub tool, let's see, sphere, make polymesh 3D. Here we go. All right, and what I wanna do here is I wanna just select this top part like so and group it um, like that. And so what I wanna do now is I want basically polygroups that will delineate between this group and this group. So if I say group loops and I want, let's say one, two edge loops, 
if I do that, now you can see that it added two edge loops to delineate those two, uh, two groups. And now let's say I want even another two here. So I can go ahead and say group loops again. And now you can see that it basically added another uh, two edge loops to that area. So now I can select this part, let's say. I can select just these group, th these, uh, these ones and maybe move them in. So now I can kind of create a shape like this, right? So it, it's basically allows you to add loops around the poly groups. And then panel loops is really nice. So panel loops is if let's say now I want to create panels from these uh, poly groups. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to go in and do this. Uh, let me just do something like that. Invert it. Oops. And let's hide these inside parts as well. All right, so now what I want to do here is just group these as one group here, and then the rest I want to group as a different group. And I kind of have a little bit of a lip because I've got perspective on, but that's fine. I can fix that very easily. Going back to here. All right, so I just have, let's say, I still, have, I still have perspective on, geez. All right, here we go. Now it's working and get rid of that. Polygroup that one polygroup and then bring the rest up and polygroup that a different group. So now I've got these type of things happening right here. And what I wanna do is I want these top ones to be panels. And I don't really care about this middle part. It's gonna create panels for it as well. But let's say like I want just different panels like uh, metal panels to be on the top part. So if I go in here and click on panel loops, you can see that it created, and I don't know if you can see it here, um, different panels for the top and the bottom. So here, I'm gonna go ahead and delete this top part. Uh, delete hidden. And you can see now that it created basically, let me turn double on so you can see what's going on. Right, so I've got this top part here and I'm gonna split these into different poly groups or into different subtools. Where are you? Go to subtool, split, split to similar parts. Okay, so now you can see that there's this middle part that's its own kind of piece. And then there's a panel on top and then there's a panel on the bottom, right? And this is really good to kind of panel things out. Like, you know, if you have like a mech or something and it's got different pieces, you can separate them out into their own kind of areas and it's really helpful. Let's see what else is there. I mean, there's really good tutorials that go through all these. I'm just kind of going through these really fast. And then there's delete loops, which is good too. Like, for example, if you have a certain shape like this and you just, it has too many uh, uh, um, um, edge loops on it, you can always say delete loops. So now it basically gets rid of uh, loops that are, um, beneath a certain angle. So anything that is less than 45 degrees, it gets rid of. And let's say I don't want 45 degrees, I want something more. So let's say 60 uh, degree angle, delete loops. So now that's even harsher, but if I want something less, I can bounce that number down. So let's say delete everything from 15 degrees and do that. So now you can see it's a, a nice way to kind of uh, delete edge loops that you don't need in a, in a model to just kind of get less kind of uh, models like that. And you know, uh, panel loops, the, there's the bevel profile for it and everything like that that you can mess with. Uh, so this is, you know, one of the uh, most amazing menus in the geometry tab. Um, and I highly recommend you spend some time on it. There's uh, tons of videos. Uh, if you guys want to learn ZBrush, you can always go to the Z classroom uh, that Pixelogic has. There's some good stuff there. Uh, there are literally like maybe 30 or 40 uh, ZBrush tutorials out there. I personally really like Maddie Spencer's uh, uh, tutorial. Uh, she was my first ZBrush teacher um, and I learned a lot from her and I can uh, go back to um, Noman here. And if you go to Browse by Instructor and go to Maddie Spencer with an S, uh, where are you? Um, Spencer, 
spring should be here maybe um why am i not seeing this oh here we go madeline scott spencer okay there we go so uh this one introduction to zbrush 2021 i would say this would be one of the best um, tutorials on zbrush right here so you can either go here and linkedin has some tutorials uh, lynda.com has some tutorials if you like their tutorials you can go there uh, you know there literally are hundreds of, of zbrush um, kind of learning zbrush tutorials out there um, i also would recommend if you can't do that definitely take a class uh, i teach uh, i well I, i'm not teaching now but i used to teach at a couple of colleges i used to teach uh, zbrush uh, and, you know, within 15 weeks, my, my students went from not knowing ZBrush at all to really um, being effective with it to creating a, a character and, and a project. So, uh, you know, a class is, is a good thing to take as well if you want to be instructed. But there's online tutorials aplenty. Um, so hopefully, uh, Lemaland, Lem hopefully that answers your question. We kind of spent a, a good amount of time on it. Uh, so uh, yeah, um, that's basically the uh, the edge loop menu uh, in kind of a a very quick nutshell. Uh, but uh, you know, I'm sure um, you know there could be um, there could be more uh, steps uh, to go through and explain everything uh, in more detail if you need to. But uh, yeah, it's it's one of those uh, really helpful go to menus that I use all the time. All right, so back to our suit here that got um, got crashed earlier. Let's see. Let's go ahead and uh, and see if we can um, we can get back to where we were. Oh, you like my cap? Yeah, um, you can get those, but you can. Get, I mean, not the specific one. I think this is a one-off thing that they did. I don't. I have never seen anybody else have this this cap. I think I'm the only person that has a gray one, uh, but. Um, you can you can you can uh, get a black one i think from uh, the pixelogic store so let me show you where that is so if you go to um, pixelogic.com and you go to store and you go to merchandise merch there it is you can get this black one uh, which is pretty neat i have one of those oh well look at that so there's two uh there's the the dad hat uh, and then there's a new era hat and I, I think mine is the new era hat it's just in gray uh, but this one is in black and uh yeah so here it is 30 bucks it's yours all right so let's do this boot thing one more time um all right so we're going to do this one one more time but what i'm going to do here i think some of the issues were that there's a little bit of um I'm just gonna go see here, like the polygons are kind of crashing into themselves. I'm gonna kind of smooth this out a little bit. Uh, so I'm just going down in subdivision levels and just smoothing this out so that polygons aren't really going into each other. I don't know if that caused the crash. I mean, who knows what would cause it? It could have been a minor solar flare, who knows? All right, and just kind of keep going up. And just so like the polygons are not going through each other or that it's flush. And by the way, I mean, you can kind of see here they are going through each other. So a good way to see that also is if you just um, do this. And you can work from the inside out. So here I'm just going to go ahead and go down to maybe level three and do that. Level five. I think the back is kind of the culprit right here. So I'm just going to smooth this out so it's not crashing into itself. Uh, and if I wanted to keep it as one piece, uh, the, the, the crashing into itself actually works better. But since I'm going to actually separate out the boot, uh, I am going to do it this way. Because maybe, you know, in the game uh, or whatever this is, the boot might cost a little bit more money to get. And uh, another thing I can do here is, um, so here we go. Here's the model again. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate it. So I've got a copy of it. Where are you? Duplicate. Are. Okay, so there's the copy. I'm going to hide the original, go to the copy, and uh, bring it back down in subdivision level and do that polygrouping one more time. So polygroup, polyloop uh, this way and 
continue to do that all the way down. Uh, one of the other things that they added, which I really appreciate, is uh, you know if I want to have all this area over here be one polygroup, there's polygroup and fill. I really like that. Oh man, is it is it the same one as the one below? It's fine. Here we go. I can just hit tap alt, do this. The thing about fill is it's not symmetrical, but it's easy enough. So now I've got that polygroup. That's great. And I just want to select all of these guys like so, and um, delete the hidden parts. Okay, those went away. All right, so now I'm going to bring back that original one. So there's the original model. And what I want to do is I want to, um, I think this still has all the way in subdivision all the way to the top. It does, and yeah, that's good enough. I think what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to use the uh, clip curve to get rid of this kind of top lip like so. Let's see what that gives me. And it gives me this kind of little bit of funky edge over here, but that's fine. Um, because this is going to be tucked in. Um, but what I probably want to do here, even better than that, is just uh, go up in subdivision levels a few times and then uh, maybe um, polygroup this a different, or just mask it. Mask, poly loop, like so and then invert the mask and then just press W here and put this in the center of it. So the only thing I've got visible besides the boot is this and then just bring this with local symmetry on, bring this in like so. Here we go. That's exactly what I want. I want this kind of effect and I could probably go in here. I, I, um, I can probably delete this poly group here, but I, I don't want to do that. It's fine. This is exactly what I need. And I still have my subdivision levels. I can go back up and bring the original uh, suit back up. And with the original suit, I'm going to do the thing that I did earlier, which is just go all the way down in subdivision levels and and just smooth this part to like some sort of a nub. That's just gonna be underneath. I mean, I could, like I said, I could delete it, but I don't really want to delete it. So there's that, and turn solo back off. So there's the boot part right here, and let me just go back up in subdivision levels. So there's that. I can kind of still see the edge here of the boot. So I could probably go in here with the move brush and just push this in like so it's inside doesn't matter um, again if this was going to be a game asset I would have to do you know I would have to really clean these up uh, sometimes I do that sometimes other people do it so it doesn't matter and then what I'm going to do here is just use my the move brush to um, is this mask it is just move this up like so now the boot is separated out and it's its own thing so let's say the boot kind of goes on like so. All right, so now let's just do some shoe design. I have some good kind of underpinnings here from uh, the different alphas, but now I'm just gonna go with Damien Standard and start adding a little bit of uh, definition to this. All right, so maybe this kind of, there's a thing like this, and there is the lip. I know there's some questions. Uh, okay, there's a Discord server, okay. Is sci-fi my favorite genre? Uh, mostly, yeah. Most of the stuff, most of the work that I do is, is more science fiction-y. I mean, it could be, uh, you know, near future or high design, but it is futuristic. I definitely am more of a futurist, but I do like to make a monster every now and again, and maybe next time, uh, when it's closer to Halloween, maybe I will take a break from this model and sculpt a uh, some sort of a monster creature. So this month I'm doing three, and my next one, when is my next one? My next um, stream is going to be... on the 29th so yeah it's going to be near halloween 
So yeah, maybe um, if you guys want, or if whoever's tuned in at the time, I'll ask. If you want, I can do like some sort of a creature or a monster. Um, I might use the same techniques as well. All right. But yeah, I'm, I'm more of a futurist. All right, that's looking good. I'll probably have some sort of buckle or something that goes across here on top, but right now I'm just basically creating the base, base for this. All right. Let's see any more questions? Uh, hey, uh, str strangle. Wow. Well, that's a name. I need to come up with a cool incognito name. Anybody have some good ideas? Uh, what do I model? I'm modeling a spacesuit, like so. Looks clean. All right. Thanks. Thank you very much. You know what's funny about streaming is I have no idea who these people are that, uh, you know, like I don't know if this person is a kid or an expert or somebody who's just channel surfing on YouTube and or Twitch and found this. Let's see, this person is on Twitch. So. Strangle, tell us a little bit about yourself. Tell us an interesting thing about you. <laughs> uh, the incognito work. Uh, do you use panel loop? Yes, I do. I sure do. All right, here's a here's a good idea of, of using panel loops, right? Let's say here, let's choose the helmet. Uh, and it's always good to jump from one part of the model to the next, by the way. If you spend too much time in one area, I tell my students to move off to another one. So you can see here that it's kind of like I want to separate out this top part and this back part and this bottom part into different panels. Uh, oh, OK, here we go. Strangles giving us details. Yes. He's 19, awesome, good age. That's a great age, actually. A Czechoslovakian student, okay. Uh, game dev is a hobby, that's cool. And start Blender, so I hop a lot of modeling streams to see something new. Awesome. Thank you for that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now I have a little bit of an idea of who we're talking to. Okay, so if I'm going to use panel loops for this, what I'm going to do here, this is going to be really interesting. So guys, watch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mask this area. Well, actually, first, before I do that, let me duplicate it. So I've got a copy of my helmet. So, OK, there it is. And then with that duplicate, I'm going to mask this area. Right. And like so. Oh, I'm going to delete the lower subdivision levels. I don't need them. So I'm just going to be like the super high res. Uh, oops. And just go ahead and do this. So this is going to be a little bit different than um, the method I used earlier, but it's going to achieve a similar kind of effect where I basically want this top part to be its own panel. Now, um, what would be nice and I don't know if it does it. Let's see, does it? Uh, is there a, uh, for polygon edge actions, is there a mask fill? Nope. It'd be nice to have a mask fill, um, but there isn't. But I just did the outline, and I'll just kind of use a big brush and fill it in. 
people always ask, well, you know, do I need to have fundamental knowledge of art to be able to use ZBrush? And I always say a yes. Because if you know how to, uh, I mean, you're painting now, so you kind of have to have some ideas about what the best way to paint is. All right, so now I've got this, and uh, then I'm just going to go into the masking menu here. Of course, I can always use hotkeys for this, but I'm just doing this too. I'll show you guys. Uh, I'm going to sharpen that mask. Okay, so there's some areas I don't really need to be kind of protruding like that and mask this part. Inadvertently, okay, so let me smooth the mask, blur mask, sharpen, sharpen, sharpen. Okay, that's good. So let's say I want this to be a panel, like, you know, like the top part of the hat comes off, right? So if I had control W, it's going to go ahead and polygroup this a different polygroup, okay? And then what I can do is I can say, okay, well, I want this to be its own panel, and I want the bottom part to be its own panel. I can also, I mean, I would, you know, uh, if I were to do this kind of, I would do this a little bit more carefully, um, if I were doing this for a, you know, kind of for a production. Uh, but what I'm going to do here is, uh, so it's kind of created some sort of an edge over here that I might not like, but it's good enough. And what I will do here is I will go ahead and go into geometry, edge loop, and panel loops. There it is. I'm going to choose five loops is good. Thickness, I'm going to give it a little bit more thickness. And let's see what that looks like. Panel loops. What the hell happened? Okay, so that just did not really come out the way I wanted it to. Um, maybe I have too much geometry here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, bump down the uh, level of geometry uh, to be half of this. I'm going to keep the groups, zero mesh. So maybe it kind of... Uh, did not like the fact that I had so many polygons and I don't know where the other groups came in I don't think I've got anything hidden in here, but I'll check just to make sure as soon as this is done chug 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 This is pretty heavy. So uh, here we go. That's looking a little bit better All right, so let's try it now so uh, let's go to um, edge loop and panel loops and I'm just gonna go with two loops let's just do that okay so that's looking uh, kind of funky still I'm trying to ascertain what is going on with this but let's kind of make sure that there's nothing hidden I don't think there is but um, I don't know if there's any other polygroups here I don't think there are so I just want to panel out that top part Um, maybe the thickness is too much. Let's try it with less. Here we go. That was the problem. Okay, so I want the thickness to be maybe um, 0.001. Let's try that. And I'm going to bring up polyframe and do panel loops. Okay, so that actually works out okay. Right, and I think maybe uh, I will zero mesh this one more time to get less uh, geometry yeah, because that will make it a little bit more crisp around the edges. So this will, won't take long. The, the less polygons you have, the faster zero mesh goes. All right. Um, Okay, so there it is, and am I maybe I'll try. Um, you know, it's I think it's giving me the same number of poly loops just because uh, poly, uh, polygons because it wants to maintain some of this detail, but I might just force it to. Uh, no, it's going to half. Let's say I want to bring adaptive size. Uh, maybe let's keep that at fifty. And let me do that one last time. See if I can get anything better. Uh, Strangle, you're asking me that uh, masking it, uh, is it going to uh, allow me to add another texture on top? Um, no, masking is just masking. Basically, you're, you're just kind of, it's a way of selecting and it's also a way of protecting, right? Okay, here we go. This is much, much better. All right, so now if I do the panel loops on this, right? So now I've got that panel going on on top. And um, if you want to see it in more detail, I can just hide these guys right here. Right, and you can see now that it's basically created. Um, 
we, uh, right, so if I want this top part to be its own separate piece, uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and re uh, reduce the numbers to one loop here. I'm going to make it double sided, and the thickness, I'm going to go a little bit more, 0 0.00, let's say 2. And there it is. So now if I go in here, you can see that it basically created panels uh, for the top part and also for the bottom part. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the bottom parts. So you can see now that I've basically got, and also did one on the bottom. So now this top part is its own piece with paneling, right? So it basically pulled that all out. And um, if I bring everything, if I'm gonna, I'm gonna split the hidden parts here, split hidden, and um, turn this off of solo. Let's just see those two parts. So let's say I've got the top part of the helmet, and I've got the bottom part. I'm gonna hide the helmet itself. So this is the top part, and this is the bottom part. And here I can just go in here. Uh, I'm gonna use the move brush with Accu Curve, and just adjust this you know, to be its own kind of piece, right? And it's got its own inside part as well. So here you can see it's got its own kind of, it's kind of a, a skull cap. It's got its own inside part. And I can just move, oops, these around. And now I got this top part. I can add a different texture to it or I can model it differently. I can do all sorts of things as a panel on top. And the bottom part is a panel. But if I were to do this, I would probably panel out this part right here as well. So um, this part like here, I'm just kind of doing a rough outline, would be its own panel. Uh, this part right here would probably be its own panel like this. Uh, over here, this would be its own panel. So then you can basically separate things out into, into different panels. Uh, hopefully that, um, that answers the, the question. Uh, do I like The Expanse? Oh yeah, oh yeah, it's, it's one of my favorite shows. It's, it's really good. And what's funny is I, I hadn't watched it, so I, I'm kind of I was a late bloomer. Um, so I watched the last season um, live, but anything everything before that, I caught up on during COVID, uh, which was one of the things I binged on. And it is it's a great show. I really like it. It's it's unlike anything else. Uh, I also like Foundation. I don't know if you guys are watching that. It's pretty good. Good old Isaac Asimov. All right, so I'm just going back to the boots here. And I kind of like what's going on here. Let's go and work a little bit on the bottom with Damien Standard. So here's a good part where I can uh, separate out the, the kind of the sneakery part on the bottom. Oops, I want to ruin that beautiful line I had. Here I'm just basically holding shift down. Oops, oh man, I lost the whole thing in one shot. That's fine, it's easy enough to redo. All right, so that's basically separating out this kind of bottom part. Uh, let's see. Uh, I think so I have to do something with subtool management, for example, when at wide pop up menu when you place cursor above the area. Well, um, I know I, one thing I'd like is, uh, you know, one thing, one big ask that I had was folders, and they added that. And folders are really, really helpful. I don't know if uh, you guys use folders, but it's a good way to organize it. Right now, I don't really have much of this in folders, but eventually I will. I've got a a planes folder, which I probably don't need. I can probably get rid of this. I'll do it, do it right now. Uh, delete folder. And then I've got separated, which is, um, you know, I think I've got all these different parts that I can, I, I used um, from another model. I'll probably use these. So folders are really good. Um, you can scroll up and down. But a uh, thing I think that most people um, might not know of, especially beginners, is if you want to jump from one subtool to another, if you just hold Alt down and click, you can just jump to that subtool. So now I'm on the suit, now I'm on the boots, um, and it kind of has a different highlighted color. And if I had the helmet, if I want to work on the helmet, if I hold Alt down, I click on the helmet, I'm on the helmet. So uh, it's got a really nice visual way of choosing the the, poly, uh, the different subtools. 
Um, so I, I, you know, I'm pretty, um, I'm pretty happy with it, with the way it is. Um, I think folders within folders would be nice, but then might also add extra clutter. I mean, you only have so much room over here, but, um, but I, you know, I, the, the good news is that um, ever since I've started using ZBrush, it keeps getting better and better and better. And it always adds features where you go like, well, how did I live without this before? So, I, you know, it's a, definitely a program that keeps uh, adding new great features all the time. All right, so here, what I'm going to do is with the boot, I'm going to, um, I'm going to go ahead and just work on one boot uh, and not both. So I'm going to turn off symmetry, just select one, delete the other one. Um, oh, yeah, no worries. Go to the lower one, delete hidden, and go all the way back up. And I'm just going to work on one boot and then I'll mirror and weld it to the other side. Um, Okay, uh, I need a f uh, folder and folder. Yeah, a folder and folder would be nice. Uh, I think a lot of people want that, but you know, I think there's a third party tool if you really, really, really need it. There's a third party uh, plugin that you can get for uh, folder within folder uh, stuff, but it's, you know, um, but I'm sure they'll, they'll have something at some point in time. Um, how to insert a reference photo. There's different ways of doing it. Uh, one kind of really, um, there, there's a, a tool called um, Spotlight. So um, you just load your reference photo, like, I don't know. Um, let me just go ahead and import something in here. Uh, let's see. Oh, I can probably import like a motorcycle or something. Let's say this motorcycle right here, open. <clears throat> All right, so let's say this is your your image. <clears throat> Excuse me. So if you want to import it in and you want to put it somewhere, you can just uh, add it to Spotlight, which is this button right here, um, which I have on my UI, and I have it in two different places, which is kind of funny. Uh, but you can just add that to Spotlight. Now there it is. You can move it wherever you want. You can resize it. You can you can change its opacity, so you can have it be more opaque and more showing and then you can just put it anywhere you want and then uh, I think you hit Z or X I, I have my keys uh, different than the default ZBrush but Spotlight is a good way to do it so that's one way of doing it uh, another way of doing it is um, and this is something that that kind of is, is pretty neat and it's pretty fast uh, and that is if you um, you know, let's say you've got, uh, I'll just load this other motorcycle. Let's say you have an image like this. I still use Photo Viewer. <laughs> I don't know why, but it works for me. But let's say you've got this and you want to use it as reference. If it's just one image, right, what you can do here is you can just kind of have it this way and have it be, you know, have ZBrush be on top of it. And then you can turn see through and it'll show up underneath. So that basically will show up, uh, show off the image and the canvas underneath it. So that's another way to do it. Um, and yeah, so there, there are different ways of doing it. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and delete this one. That's another way of doing it. Um, I, I think there's like one or two other ways of doing it. And there are uh, some good tutorials on that uh, on, on, um, on Z Classroom. So you can look those up. Hopefully that answers your question. Um, oh, how to create a model with real-time scale. Uh, I would say the best thing to do is use this plugin called Scale Master. And it's, uh, I, I don't know if it comes with ZBrush or if it's one you download, but it's this one right here, Scale Master. So let's say I've got my whole model. Let me go back to the whole thing. So here's my entire model. And I want this to be to scale. So I go to Scale Master, right? And uh, there's this button that says Set Scene Scale. So if you click on this, then basically you will come up with these numbers. And depending on where you are, you can choose to, to say what the scene scale is. 
And um, that basically means that everything that is in your scene, right? So here there is a 16 uh, by 30 by uh, 33 feet. Then there is this one. So then I basically will decide which one of these closest measures, um, uh, closest uh, is to what I have. So I know that a human being is, uh, you know, six, 5.5 to 6 feet tall. So I don't have that here, but I have 30, right? So what I will do is I will choose this as my scene uh, unit, or I will choose this as my scene unit and then scale it up by that factor to get the exact scale. So that's that's what I would use to, to do the scaling. Um, and you know, and then you can kind of do the, you can use these sliders to just get it uh, to be whatever you want. Uh, you can resize the subtool to fit into that scale. So basically um, you can go ahead and say new bounding box subtool. And if you do that, it basically will create a bounding box. So this is the bounding box that goes around uh, what's this? Oh, that's that plane that I have. Okay, let me delete that one. So this is the box that it basically creates that goes around your model. And I don't know why it, added it. yeah, here it is, right? So this basically is the box that will encompass and let me see if transparency on. Yeah, see that this basically will fit my entire model. And then basically I will go to set scene scale and I want this box to be, let's say six inches or, uh, you know, with the helmet and everything like that, it would probably be around six inches. So it looks like I've got, or I'm sorry, six feet. So I've got 0.6 feet here, which this would be a good one to kind of go with. So I would do that. And then I would hit W, get this, turn, you know, resize everything. And then when I'm scaling here, notice that I'm going up. So what I want to do is scale this up by 10. I've got some mass points, so it's creating that weird, it's kind of neat, right? Uh, but I would resize this to be six feet tall and then that would solve my problem for me. Another thing you can always also do is export your model as FBX and load it into another program like Blender or whatever and scale it in there. Uh, and if you're working with things like jewelry or whatever, then there's a whole bunch of other types of things that you can do to, to scale it correctly. All right. Um, All right, so I think um, best way to find a stable position as a 3D model or character or environment. Uh, I, you know, I don't know if, uh, I don't know how to answer that question. I think stable positions are a thing of the past. I think whatever position you're in, it's always uh, based on a lot of other factors. Uh, it depends on what it is that you're working on. Um, so uh, I would say that um, you know if you work on a really kind of a uh, high profile game uh, that would be stable for a while. Uh, games usually take about two to three years, maybe even more, four years to develop. So that's a stable position. Um, with movies, if you're doing concept design, the concept uh, stage is usually very, uh, it, it's very time limited. So you're basically jumping between movies all the time. So I wouldn't say that's as stable as let's say working on a game. Uh, games usually tend to be more stable, but then games could get canceled and then you'll be out of a job. Uh, and then you'd have worked all that time on something that basically goes nowhere. So, you know, uh, do your research. Find out about the different games. Games are more stable. Uh, also, games hire a lot of environment artists. So being an environment ar artist is a good way to kind of get into a um, company. Characters used to be, uh, there used to be less people working on characters because you only had certain characters in a game. Like you would have the hero character and those would be like the head guys would work on that. And then you had the um, kind of the run of the mill uh, character artists, and those guys would work on um, would work on like the enemy characters, and they're like you know because when you play a game, sometimes you know you see that there's like the hero character is unique, but then there's like 50 of the enemy characters that you've got to deal with, and so um, so you know character artists are you know work used to work on lesser uh, assets. But now, within the world of skins for characters, 
um, you get you get a lot of need for character artists to develop skins and skins make a lot of money for companies so I don't know hopefully I'm answering your your question Alex but if you want like a stable job like a you know like a mailman kind of stable job this is not the industry for it a lot of things change really fast you got to be really good with adapting to change all right so zbrush is auto saving this for me which is a good thing we're at 9 p.m i'll go a little bit longer it's fine but yeah i mean i know people that have been at stable companies um Strawberry, thank you very much. Uh, see you next time as well. I know a lot of people that are, you know, have been at their job for a very long time um, as a modeler, but um, you know, all of a sudden they got, you know, they got let go. So uh, I would say, you know, always keep your skills uh, up to date. Uh, you know, always kind of have one. Uh, kind of perspective of you know maybe someday this project won't be there so keep your skills sharp always learn what's latest and greatest and um, you know always you know look at your position and think you know is this going to be something that's going to be needed after the game ships Because companies sometimes shed people after the game ships. Especially if the game doesn't do well. Man, it's painful. And sometimes you, you have no idea that the company isn't doing well. You know, you'll be showing up to work one day, just like everything's going great. And then all of a sudden, they're like, we're doing a massive layoff. Thank you very much for your help. You know, uh... Put all your plants and belongings into this box and see you later. All right. Uh, so I'm not using Dynamesh at all, by the way. Um, Divyang Div Art. I'm not using Dynamesh at all. I actually have a... Um, I've, I've started with good topology, uh, so I'm not using Dynamesh. But if I was using Dynamesh... Uh, and maybe, you know, tune in next time. Next time I'll do a monster. I'll start out with Dynamesh, and then I'll show you how I go off of Dynamesh. So that would be a good kind of thing to do next, next uh, in, a, in a couple of weeks. In, uh, not next Friday, but the Friday after. Um, okay. Alex, you're welcome. Good luck to you. And if you do find a good, stable job, let me know, because uh, I, I'd like to work there, too. Yeah, I know people at like really big companies that that basically all of a sudden are like, oh, you know, I'm I'm leaving. I don't know. I I do this stuff even if it wasn't for a job. I you know, I mean like this isn't a job. I just you know, usually spend Sometimes during the week when I'm not working on uh, just having fun. I mean, I enjoy doing this stuff. I don't want to do it as just work. One of the most tragic things is I see a lot of artists that are amazing artists that do maybe some good projects on their own, private projects, or do some amazing projects at school. And then they find a job at a big company and then you never hear from them again. Because a lot of these big companies basically, uh, you know, make you sign things that say whatever you work on belongs to them. So unless you're like this big artist that has a lot of say, uh, you don't have, you don't, you know, you don't get to do that. And also probably you're so busy doing work that you don't get to play with your own stuff, which is kind of tragic because that's how you get better. Um, because if you work for a company, you're probably just doing the same thing over and over and over and over again. And uh, sometimes it gets really repetitive and you don't really get to expand your skill set. 
So it's always good to have projects on your own. Like even if you're really tired at work, like create some sort of a thing for you, uh, maybe like a personal project or something like that to work on outside of work. And that will allow you to kind of keep your skills sharp. Um, Because remember, you know, companies are great, but they have a very short memory. So once you're gone, you're gone. They're not really going to worry about you being able to find jobs after you're outside, out, out of their kind of jurisdiction. All right. Uh, best ever. I am doing well. How are you? Where are you tuning in from, best ever? Are you what's what country are you in? All right. I wonder if there's a let's see, he's coming from YouTube, so he should be getting hearing me real time. So here I'm just basically doing shoe modeling, <laughs> completely different, um, you know, this is as organic as, as things get, I guess. I'd love to work for on a shoe project with like Nike or Adidas, Adidas more than Nike, design some shoes for them in ZBrush. All right. India, awesome. Where in India are you? Right. I think I need to um, I need to put this inflate brush on my radial menu. That makes things a lot faster. All right, so this is where the big toe goes. Go back to H polish, pump that down. So you can see here, I'm using some of the elements from that. Um, I'm using some of the elements from the um, alpha that I used to get this, but I'm also you know I can also you know. Ad lib. And again, I don't really, I'm spending a lot more time on this than I need to, but uh, it's kind of fun. It's kind of fun to design a shoe. What's amazing is that Adidas does 3D print some of their soles, so that's kind of nice. And I'm not really going to detail the soul out here. I'm just going to go with what I have. Oops, H polish. Yeah, so if anybody from Adidas or Nike is watching, give me a call. Would love to work with you guys on designing something in ZBrush. Another thing that would be funny is if somebody from uh, Blue Origin or SpaceX called me to help design their spacesuits. What do you guys think of the um, spacesuits that, uh, that um, SpaceX has? You guys like them? They look like they've been designed by the same people that designed the Tesla <laughs> cars. So, I mean, it's a clean design. It's pretty good. And I don't know, uh, Blue Origin just kind of has jumpsuits, it seems like. It was weird to see Captain Kirk in like a jump, a blue jumpsuit. It would be cool if he actually wore his uh, his Star Trek outfit, like maybe one of the ones from the movies. 
All right. Um, uh, you know, sometimes I retopo in ZBrush, sometimes I retopo in Maya. It depends on the project. It depends on what the need is. Um, most of my retopoing I do, um, you know, in ZBrush has some new capabilities that makes retopoing a lot of fun. Um, but ZSphere retopoing is good. Um, you know, do, using the extrude in the Z modeler is a good way to retopo. Uh, and most of the times I can just get away with just doing that. But um, but if I need to do heavy duty retopoing and I've got a really kind of tight schedule, I probably doing do it using um, Maya and uh, use the uh, quad draw um, capability in it. And I also got another retopo tool called Zyrail or Zrail or something like that, which is kind of a neat way to especially for organic models to do retopo. Uh, modeling is kind of one of my passions, so I, um, you know, eventually one day when I get around to it, I'm going to write a book on modeling, and uh, I've got most of it written, uh, but I need to update it with some of the newer things that are coming out. Um, but, um, you know, I think retopoing is just one of those topics that just keeps getting better and better and better. And I'm sure that at some point we'll get to a place where we don't need to retopo or UV or do any of that stuff, that there'll be uh, AI tools or automatic tools that do it for us. But I don't think that's anytime soon. I still think there's a lot of manual stuff that needs to be done. Uh, but then that's what I know, you know. I mean, who knows what is going on in R&D in companies. Yeah, quad draw is good. A topo gun is, is decent. I think they're working on a new version. Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of retopo tools out there. But you know, when I design, I don't really worry that much about topology. Uh, I you know, I mean, I do a little bit. I do more so than most other uh, concept designers, I think. But most concept designers, they just um, they don't really worry about topology, at least not until. Unless they're asked to, uh, or until kind of the latter parts of the project. All right, so here there's a little bit of kind of weird stuff happening, so I'm just going to smooth it down. There's some weird stuff happening over here. Let's just get that out of the way. Like that. So we're getting kind of uh, close to time here. Uh, any tips for environment modeling? Um, what kind of environments? I mean, are you doing like terrains? Are you doing just like props? What kind of environments? Because that it, it depends on the type of environment you're working on. Man, I really don't like what Inflate did over here. But that's fine. Uh, beginner that is always concerned about poly count active points while sculpting. Um, yeah, I do uh, actually. Um, I think that uh, <clears throat> I think you should understand topology, like to a certain point. I think it's important to understand what topology is. Um, otherwise, you're going to be spending a lot of time not knowing what's going on. So study as much as you can about what topology is and what kinds of topologies are good for what kind of things. Uh, you know, like is, certain topologies are good for, um, like, you know, to animation. There are certain topologies that are good for sculpting. There's uh, certain topologies that are good for 3D printing. So you need to really understand what those topology co uh, components are. Um, so if you spend some time in the beginning and study topology, um, I think I think that would help. <clears throat> so uh, best ever, what do you mean environment modeling? What, what kind of tips? What kind of environments? Let's find out uh, that first. Like, are you working on game environments? Are you working on what kind of environments are you working on? 
or what what kind of environments do you need advice on? Right, there's that. Um, okay, Amar Amarildo Grotto. You're welcome. Best ever, you're still, you know, I don't know if it's taking a while for my thing to get to you, but I'm still, you know, wondering about what kind of environments you're working on or you want to work on or... All right, so this is kind of looking pretty good here. I think I need to bridge this a little bit. Right, so we still don't have oh it's kind of wild that this um, it's getting more and more that um, pixel logics kind of things are popping into the chat which is kind of cool they're informative if you don't know now you know um, Right, there's that. So this is all kind of one piece. So I'm, whenever I'm doing this, I'm always kind of imagining um, how many pieces this is going to be. So no opinions on SpaceX suits. Uh, no information from uh, best ever about what kind of environments. So if you guys want to find out, ask soon because I think it's 9.16. I'll probably go till 9, 9.20. Uh, so in the next 10, 15 minutes, ask your last questions so I can get back to you. And again, if I can't get back to you, you can tune in uh, in a couple of Fridays. Or you can leave your question in the comments if it's related to ZBrush and somebody from Pixelogic will answer it for you. All right, so this looks good. Let's put some features on here uh, like this. Uh, trim, where is it? Trim hole. All right, so maybe there's like a feature over here. Feature like this over here. All right, that's that. Okay, so it'll probably be like some sort of a buckle or something that goes over there. And I'm kind of liking how this shoe is. So now, um, Marin Weld will not work on this because it's got multiple subdivision levels. <coughs> so I will use Subtool Master. So that's over here as a uh, plugin. Um, UV Master, where are you, Subtool Master? Subtool Master right there, and uh, mirror selected subtool, and we want to mirror to next, merge into one subtool, okay. Uh, we'll combine mesh will be that, okay, that's fine too. So now it basically will do that mirroring for me. All right, and there it is. So now I've got my two shoes, and they're looking okay, and then now I can turn on symmetry and start kind of doing a little bit more. I think what I want to do here is add, I keep doing it, so I need to add uh, inflate to my um, radio menu. All right, so I guess, 
best ever you didn't really get to ask your tell me about what kind of environments you want me to talk about and I have to uh, let's see is it 20? Yeah, it's, it's almost time I have to go so maybe catch me next time and everybody else thank you very much for joining it's been fun uh, being with you um, just again to remind you uh, right so here kind of we are with this model so far and uh, let me just go in here I want to do one more thing before we go and that is create kind of a a lip here that the clothing is kind of going over the shoes like so and one last thing here is bring these in so I mean this is kind of you know um, what I would be doing on a, a normal um, sculpt session is just you know spending a little bit of time on different components and getting it to a point where it looks uh, it looks passable right and uh, yeah it still looks a little bit you know again it looks really good from a distance but once I turn on the colors and let's see if the poly paint came okay so that's looking good and the poly paint on the suit and the helmet and the visor let's bring that up and the pack in the back and that and uh, this piece over here that we kind of worked on but doesn't really have a color so let's go ahead and color it up real quick so I'm just gonna grab let's say this color and fill object so there it is um, so yeah, this is kind of starting to come together little by little uh, there's that top part of the helmet which I don't want so this is kind of what it's going to look like more or less and um, you know once we're done with getting it to a certain point I think the next st st stage would be to uh, find a good pose for this and I'll probably do that uh, in the not next one I'll probably do a whole new uh, monster for Halloween and then the episode after that I'll pose the model uh, I mean it's you know from this distance it's looking pretty good uh, I think I I like where it's going um, I think the concept is working for me it's got some interesting parts and uh, based on what I decide to do in the future I might um, alter some things but I will be adding the packs again uh, that we lost from the crash and also adding some other components so again uh, thank you very much for watching uh, again make sure to uh, like and um, subscribe and all that good stuff and uh, we'll see you uh, <laughs>